Hello guys, welcome to another video of crabbing. This time I went to the Green Mile Pier, uh, downtown Newport News, Virginia. And um, I changed the settings on my GoPro, so this time uh, the video might be a little more clear. And as you can see, as soon as I drop my crab pot in the water, we have a visitor. And uh, Mr. Crab here, he is trying to get to this chicken. But he uh, doesn't see. <laughs> He's uh, on the back side of the cage here. And he's trying to get in. I heard that crabs, they have a real good sense of smell. So anytime you drop any type of, um, you know, meat or anything like that in the water, uh, whether it's chicken, um, turkey necks, uh, chicken liver, you know, even bacon. I heard that uh, crabs will even eat bacon if you uh, use that as bait as well. But they have a real good sense of smell and they will find their way to whatever bait that you decide to use. As you can see, this guy is already inside of the crab trap and he is going to town. He's like he's kind of hung up on um, on the, uh, the string that's on the trap. <clears throat> but he managed to get away and now he's uh, eating away at this chicken here. Yeah, I definitely um, had a lot of success with the uh, using the chicken wing more than any other bait that I've ever used. Uh, I've used squid and I've recently just switched over to um, using turkey necks and also chicken liver, which is good. But after uh, being in the water for a while, I guess it starts to lose its smell and really don't get crabs to come back to it too often is what I noticed with the uh, chicken liver versus uh, the regular chicken wing I know before I, I've left one wing in my trap like for the whole time when I've been out on the water for a couple hours and it still works without me having to change it out so <laughs> try to stick to what works but it's very very um very very interesting to see what actually happens once you drop your crab trap in the water and um you know to, to see these guys you know come out of nowhere especially like when they when you see them come from out of the background and and they find their way inside the cage and they start gnawing away at this chicken So yeah, I went out to the Green Mile. Uh, this is my very first time crabbing out here. And um, when I first started out, I was catching a, a bunch of small ones. And, uh, oh, look at this guy, this guy. <laughs> I guess he, uh, I guess he can eat the, the chicken better from this side. Unless he wanna get a very, very <laughs> good uh, video shot of himself. One thing I like about this GoPro Hero 9, you know, uh, it shoots in 4K underwater and you, it really, really shows a lot of um, detail in, in, in the crabs and even in the other, like, um, fish and things like that that it catches on there. Well, I had to change my settings from the last video I did. Um, this time I did 4K at 30 frames per second and the last time I was doing 60 frames per second so I don't know I think I changed the um, the wide balance as well and I think that's why uh, this video is a little more clear than uh, than the last one <clears throat> but yeah so um, so yeah this guy he's uh <laughs> He's right in the middle of my GoPro this time. Well, look at look how you can see 
you know, his legs, like a definition of his legs and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, uh, this is my first time going down to the Green Mile Pier. Um, I've, I've always heard a lot of um, stories, um, people saying that you can get a, catch a lot of uh, crabs out there. As it's um, actually close to the uh, Monitor Merrimack Tunnel, and I guess you know a lot of it's a lot of ships down there, a lot of uh, tugboats and barges and things like that in that area. So I guess you know by them going in and out all the time, maybe it maybe a route of crabs up or something. I don't know, but. Um, Definitely had a pretty good day out there um, yesterday. Well, it started good, but it ended bad. <laughs> uh, I was totally upset. You know, it started out with little small crabs. I let a lot of them uh, go. I think I let this guy go. Um, he was too small. But uh, I ended up um, catching maybe about 20 plus crabs. And I had to end up getting rid of them because a lot of them died. And yeah, the golden rule of crabbing is a dead crab is a bad crab. You know, when crabs, when they die, they release certain toxins within their body. And it really spoils the meat. It gives them their meat like a mushy, um, spoil kind of smell to it. It's real mushy. So. You definitely don't want to eat that. And but that is that is if the crab dies on its own. Now, if you um, have live crabs and you put ice on them and you freeze them and they die that way, then you don't have to worry about the toxins. But if they just die um, on their own, then they're not they're not good enough to eat. So um, a buddy of mine, he he's a um, he been crabbing for years. And I called him and asked him, well, what was the um, reason why my crabs died? Uh, I put them in the cooler like I normally do. And I've been out there for hours just having the crabs in the cooler. And they all, you know, stayed alive. But I guess um, if they, you know, if they get too hot, just like anything, you know, um, they'll probably end up dying. And, um, and out there, I had a whole bunch of. I think I caught like a lot of old crabs. Um, you know, they had a lot of barnacles on them. Uh, they look they look kind of more brown than um, than green. You know, I know they call them blue crabs, but they look like they have like a greenish color to them. And um, I don't I don't know that probably could have been the reason. But um, yeah, I, I was really really <laughs> upset to throw all those crabs away. <clears throat> but you know, I don't want to. Definitely don't want to get sick. Don't want to get anybody sick. So I'll just have to go back out there and uh, try to catch some more. But yeah, a buddy of mine uh, gave me a little secret on um, uh, the crabs. They have to stay moist. Um, try to keep moisture around them. So he told me to freeze a jug of water and. Put that inside the cooler you know in a plastic bag or something like that with the crabs and that way when you put them in there once the uh, the the jug of water starts to melt you know it, it'll it'll create moisture for the crabs so that way um you don't have to worry about them dying from you know being too hot or not being you know i guess uh, hydrated or moisture enough so uh, I did that today. I went back out today, and I um, I did that, and everything worked out fine. So I was able to get the crabs back and um, get them on ice. And so should have some pretty good, healthy crabs this weekend. Yeah. So there's just just some a few crab tips for um, for people who are probably trying to get into. You know, uh, crabbing for blue crabs. There's some things to know. Um, 
But yeah, so uh, this guy, he is getting a lot of camera time. <laughs> he has got his butt in front of the camera and he is going to town on this chicken. One thing I can say about this GoPro audio, it's um, really picks up everything. So I'm guessing uh, maybe the crab is, maybe a shell is like bumping up against the camera. That's why we was getting these, uh, this sound. But yeah, he is really, really uh, going to town <laughs> on this chicken right here. <laughs> Uh, I was always been a marine uh, type person. I always wondered what goes on underneath the water. So this idea actually came to me from a friend about uh, putting a GoPro inside of a crab trap to see how it goes. And uh, I decided to do it and because I was always uh, interested myself. And the things that you will see underwater is amazing. Little guy. I think this guy was a little too small for me. Oh, and look at that. We got like a little hermit crab. <laughs> uh, don't tell me the hermit crab ran, ran him off. He, he moved out the way just in time. <laughs> and, uh, little hermit crab came in there I've also caught a lot of those too uh, since I've been crabbing I've ran across a couple of those and uh, a couple of the spider crabs as well I even got lucky once and uh, and, and pulled up a fish yeah so I don't know that oh there go another crab in the background back there a totally different one. I guess the other one, he's still messing with my camera. And this guy, feels like he's trying to get in there. And he's trying to figure it out. He's trying to figure out his way of how can he get to this chicken here. fish in the background there. I was able to catch him. Oh, there we go. He's making his way around the side there. Man, I just missed him. <laughs> I had a crab. Oh, so here we go. So I end up pulling up. And I think I end up... Uh, So here go another guy here. Now this is one of the things, another reason why too, um, that I also wanted to put the GoPro inside of my trap. As you can see, you know, once it touched the ground, only one of the doors opened this time. And um, I don't know why. I, um, I put weights on the doors so this wouldn't happen. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, one of the doors didn't come down. But, you know, this guy managed to get in anyway. So he came in from the other side. And the one thing about these crabs, like I said, they have a real, really, really good sense of smell. So if it's some uh, meat or anything like that, they're going to find a way to get to it. They're definitely going to find a way to get to it. And he is... Seems like he's taking his time with it. He's not uh, as aggressive as that last one. <laughs> he's really taking his time with this one. Yeah. But yeah, I, I probably missed out a lot of times because of uh, this malfunction of the trap. You know, not working properly. It probably could have got maybe two or three crabs in there. Uh, 
I also want to do another video. I got a Promar crab trap. And um, it's a lot bigger than this one. And it, it's, uh, it's one of the traps to where it's set up to where if the crabs get in, you know, they can't get out. So I don't have to pull it up as often. I can just drop it and leave it. And if the crabs are big enough, you know, they won't be able to get out. But if they're, they're too small, they have like these little circle, they have these rings that if the crab is small enough, then he'll be able to get out. He... But um, I have, I've used that a couple times. Haven't really had any success with that crab trap. So I, I pretty much stuck to this one. And I also have a basket that I use. Um, the basket works really well. Nope, oh, we got a visitor over here. I'd like somebody to see. If, if that door, see, look at that. If the door wouldn't have malfunctioned, that guy would have came in there too. Now he looks like he's a big one too. He's trying to get in from this side. He sees his buddy in there. Oh man, look at this guy. Oh man, he was a big one too. Couldn't get in. Couldn't get in with this door malfunction. Yeah, he was like, he was a pretty big one. Uh oh, we got some action here. Who is this uh, un unwanted guest? Oh, another fish here. <laughs> I don't know what kind of fish that is. I've never seen one like that one before. Uh, not really. I don't really know too much about fish. I have a lot of buddies that go fishing. They, uh, they can probably tell you what kind of fish it is. You can leave it in the comment section if you know what kind of fish that was. Oh, he ran him off. He said, get away from here. <laughs> It's like this chicken belonged to me. Well, yeah, if you know what kind of fish that was, you know, hey, leave it in the comment section and, um, and educate me about fish. <laughs> I definitely haven't seen one like that one before. Oh, we got some more in the background there. Uh, I don't know what that was. Yeah, this crab is really taking his time, and I, I didn't pull the trap up as, as often that I normally do. So, um, I try to do it like every 15 minutes, but I think I had my uh, another crab trap out there that I was uh, checking on as well. Here's the little fish guy again. He's back for some more. He said, I can't let you have all this chicken to yourself. <laughs> yeah, but the Promar crab trap that I have, I really haven't had any success with that one. Um, I was thinking maybe um, um, a friend of mine has a boat. And uh, maybe if I go out on the water and drop it out there, Maybe I'll have a little bit more success. I don't know. But around the pier area, um, where, I, where I do most of my crabbing at, I haven't had any success with the Promar crab trap. You know, you know it's just like one of those uh, George Foreman grills. You know, you can just set it and forget it. You don't have to pull it up as often. So I would definitely... Uh, love to be able to drop that in the water and just you know pull it up when I get ready to leave and hopefully have a lot of crabs in there oh there go another one in the background like he was about to come but then he changed his mind all because of this malfunction of this uh, crab trap that door didn't open because if that door would have been open he definitely would have came in there Got his little fishing buddy here. He's definitely staying away from the crab. He's staying on his side and, and letting Mr. Crab stay on his, uh, his side. Mm. 
Yeah, so I, I definitely didn't uh, didn't really pull the trap up as, um, as normally as I would. Uh, I try to set my timer on my phone. I figure like 15 minutes will be a good enough time once I drop it back in the water to check it again. I figured uh, the crabs will probably smell it and come around. Yeah, they, they, they like fresh chicken. I know a lot of people feel like they have to leave it out all night and, you know, so it can um, get like this stinky smell to it. But I've learned like you can take chicken fresh out of the pack and use it and it works just as just as good. Like it don't really have to be, um, you know, old or old bait or anything like that. It can be fresh. And they'll still they'll still uh, gravitate towards it. Oh man, what is that? Oh, we got some uh, we got some fish back there. I don't know what kind of fish those were. But yeah, this definitely would have been a good little um, video if uh, if that other door would have been open. Cause that other crab that was trying to get in, he looked like he was really big. But yeah, I um just started crabbing not too long ago, maybe like uh maybe like two months ago. You know, uh, my brother-in-law came up from Florida a couple of years ago. That's the first time I ever did any crabbing, probably back in like 2015. And uh, we went to the uh, James River Bridge Pier, and um, he showed me how to how to do some crabbing out there. And I kind of got away from it, and and then um, I just started back up. It's a good hobby. I like being out on the pier, enjoying the breeze, and you know, uh, you meet a lot of friendly people out there as well. A lot of people that's been doing this for a while and they can, you know, give you some tips and things like that. Yeah, so once since now that I've got into it, you know, I've been trying to do a lot of research uh, about blue crabs and, you know, uh, learn their laws on which ones you can keep and things like that and uh, the season learn about low tide and high tide things like that and how it affects um, the crabs yeah but just like any other thing you know um, especially when it comes to fishing and stuff like that you know if it's your day it's your day <laughs> no matter what kind of bait you use or anything um, I know sometimes I've went out and um, I used a chicken leg and you know, really didn't have any success, and then I switched over to squid, and, and uh, the crabs was liking that that day. You know, some days they want squid, some days they want chicken. Uh, they might want a turkey neck or something like that, or chicken liver. I guess it, it just all depends, you know. But I will say uh, I've had most of my success with the chicken wing. But um, as you, as we all know, these chicken wings are getting very expensive <laughs> as of late. So <laughs> it's uh, you know you got to be very, very careful. Um, but I see that the turkey necks they they they're not that expensive, and um, you know you can cut those up. Uh, you probably get you a nice pack of turkey necks, uh, maybe three um, in a pack uh, for maybe like you know four or five dollars and then you know you can cut you can cut those up and then make them last for a long time and they work just as good you know um, i experimented with those and um they love the, the chicken liver as well and uh chicken liver is not that expensive um you know it's only like maybe two dollars um at food lion or you know, if if you have a food line where you live, I know here in Virginia, 
We have food lions. Uh, I know a lot of places down south have Winn Dixie and Publix, you know, places like that. I mean, of course, Walmart probably have it as well. So if you want to get into crabbing, uh, those are some different baits that you can use. Yeah. So what's this guy doing here? He seems like he is hiding. You can barely see him on the other side there. You know. And I was so happy to be able to get, you know, some really good footage this time. Very, very clear. More, more clear. And, um, you know, able to see, um, oh man, yeah, see, look at that, what is that, uh, that fish in the background there, so yeah, so we was able to get a lot of more uh, marine life this time, you know, the last time we just had like the crabs and, and fish, but now we got some spectators back there, <laughs> Got some spectators back there as well. Yeah. But this is what goes on. I was hoping that I can possibly get like a some footage of like a stingray or something like that. Maybe even a sea turtle. That'd be really good. If I can get uh some footage of a sea turtle. Uh but this is the you know the Chesapeake Bay um water. You know, so it's, it's not the not the prettiest one. It's not like you know we're in the Caribbean or nothing like that. But uh, well, this is still pretty good. Still pretty good. And so well, there we go. I end up pulling the cage up there, and as you can see, he's a tiny little guy. So I didn't keep him, you know, uh, I know some people, they keep the small crabs and use them as bait. But yeah, he's, he's a tiny little guy. So I just let him, let him crawl back in the water. It wouldn't have did me any good trying to eat that little guy. He still got some living to do until somebody else catches him once he get, <laughs> probably later on this year, once he, once he fill out. Say that the uh, crabs tend to fill out um, in the fall, so like towards November, you know, you'll definitely probably catch some pretty big ones. You know, I've caught a yeah. As you can see, as soon as I drop the cage back in the water, my these guys come right back, <laughs> right back. Yeah. Look at that! Look at this guy! Look at the, look at they, how they, how fast they, I don't know what those are, but I guess those, something inside of his mouth. What he eat with? Yeah. So now you can really see how these guys. And that's a good uh, camera view, camera angle right there, of, of how these guys actually eat. And as you can see. He has, he's having a tough time with the skin. That's why I like using the chicken wing because he's having a tough time with that skin and, and that skin is going to keep him there because, you know, crabs, they are very, very stubborn. You know, you're not going to take no for an answer. He, he's going to do whatever it takes to get to that meat that's underneath that skin. So he's going to keep gnawing at it. And by that time, you know, that'll give me enough time to snatch him up. But as you can see, I dropped the cage in the water again, and the other door didn't fall. So I may have to get me a new cage here soon. And this is the very first uh, crab trap that I bought. And uh, it's starting to give me some problems. I could have missed out on some really good eating. <laughs> some really good eating dealing with this thing. But uh, it has served me well, though, I will say. I've had some pretty nice catches with it. Um, a lot of success with it at Green Mile. Not much at uh, Hilton Village. Uh, Hilton Village is another pier here 
in uh, Newport News, Virginia. So if, if anybody's ever in the area and want to do some crabbing or anything like that, um, uh, Hilton Village in Newport News is a nice spot to go to. Uh, James River Bridge in Newport News is a good place. Um, they also have a pier out in Yorktown, Virginia. Uh, they got a Harrison Pier over in Ocean View area in Norfolk, Virginia. And they also have one in Virginia Beach. Um, I've been there. I uh, really don't like it too much uh, for crabbing because the pier is so high. And um, and uh, the last time I went there, when I was pulling up my basket, you know, it takes so long to pull it up. Sometimes the crabs will just jump right out. So I lost a few. So me personally, I wouldn't recommend uh, crabbing at uh, Virginia Beach Pier on the ocean front. Um, but I have had a lot of success at James River, Hilton Village, and even uh, Green Mile. Uh, that's downtown in uh, Newport News as well. So um, they also have a fishing pier um, on 16th Street in downtown Newport News as well. Um, I've only been out there once, but it wasn't for crabbing. Um, it's a nice view to see, um, look across the water. Nice place to go out and just get your get some uh, some good thoughts out and have a talk, you know, with someone or something like that. But this crab is <laughs> he is fighting to try to get through this skin. So so that's I'm glad that this it was able to catch it, catch this footage to see how um, how the chicken wing is a good bait. For the crabs because it, it will keep them there for long periods of time because he is fighting to get to, uh, fighting to get through the skin here now if that was a drumstick you know he would have been full by now he would have you would have ate all that meat um, especially how long it, it's taking me to, <laughs> to pull this up I probably would have had a bone left you know, dealing with this guy because he is definitely on a mission here. He is definitely on a mission. I wish I would have. I wish we could have got some more marine life in the background there. I know we had a couple fish earlier. But it seemed like Mr. Crab is on his own now. Yeah, a lot of people like to. Um, you know, steam the crabs, uh, which is good. You know, um, a lot of some people, I know a guy I was, um, when I was out at Green Mile, uh, on this day, um, there's another guy, he, he got really, really lucky. He probably caught maybe 30 to 40 crabs and, uh, they was pretty big size and, and he said that he was going to go home and cook them right then and there. You know, so they said it's good to cook live crabs immediately. Uh, some people, like myself, you know, I like to put them on ice and freeze them, and um, and try to cook a, a whole lot of them at the same time with friends, family, things like that. So, yeah, if you put them on ice, you'll be good. <clears throat> um, from what I read, you know, um, as long as they were alive before you froze them. You know, you can put them on in the freezer and you can keep them for up to three months. And the meat and everything will still be good. So that's, that's if you uh, catch a lot of crabs and you don't plan on 
you know, eating them right away. You can do that. You know, if you want to wait and probably go out and catch some more, add more to it, and then have one big, you know, crab ball or something like that. And that's the best way to go. But yeah, you definitely don't want to. Uh, oh, I was able to pull this guy up. I, I think he was too small as well. He was a small guy. You know, so I ended up um, letting him go. And back in the water we go. And it's a lot of debris this time. I don't know what was going on this time. But it's like it's like a little mini tornado going on down there. <laughs> um, but the other door opened this time. And, you know, that's how this type of trap supposed to work. You know, once it hit the bottom, you know, the door's supposed to come open. And then... Um, like I say, I normally set my timer maybe 15 minutes and then I'll try to check it sometimes a little sooner oh man, there we go so this guy he didn't hesitate eating. he looks like he's pretty big you know he looks like he's a big one too but with my luck um, I think this guy ended up getting away actually. <laughs> uh, maybe I was, maybe I, I didn't uh, abide by my, my rule and I was uh, doing something else or probably checking on my other traps or something. But I think this guy ended up getting away for whatever reason. I guess all this debris and I don't know why the water is moving like that for whatever reason. Um, it's a lot going on down there and I don't know if that is going to run him off but I think I end up losing this guy but as you can see just from the few times that I dropped this trap down the water that chicken has been gnawed on a lot and it's still kicking because of that skin. Yep, so because of that skin, it's still, still kicking. <laughs> yeah, but now, you know, the water was nice and clear earlier. And now it seemed like uh, <laughs> it seemed like it's a in the middle of a sandstorm or something. I don't understand why it's uh, it's doing that. I think I dropped the trap in the same spot. Yeah, I think I, uh, I dropped it in the same exact spot. So not sure what's going on here. yeah um, it's definitely nice to see uh, what goes on down there and this crab is he's all over this chicken like he's actually on top of it <laughs> he's on top of it like it's another crab you know unlike the first uh, <laughs> the first crab in the video he wanted to switch sides and you know have his back towards the camera, getting some camera time. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it definitely would have been good to catch this guy. He does look like he's a got some pretty big, pretty decent size to him. something happened um, because I think around this time there was a lot of like grass it was like some grasses something like that that was in the water <clears throat> and uh, I don't know I don't know if one of the um, you know Harris I mean not Harrison but uh, 
the Green Mile Pier is close to like a a boating area. So I don't know if, if maybe one of the boats was um, got turned on or something and was moving. You know, maybe the propeller or something like that was stirring up all this stuff. I'm not sure. This guy is all on top of this chicken right here. You know, I really think that this guy probably got away from me, though, if I remember correctly. <laughs> well, he was one of the few. Um, I had a pretty good day that day. I just it's unfortunate, like you know, uh, the, some of the, uh, a lot of the crabs died, and I even read um, something about you know when. If a crab dies and release those toxins, it can also affect any other crabs that's around them and cause them to die as well. So um, I'm definitely doing a lot more research on these blue crabs because you know, I'll definitely be out there catching more of them. But I definitely I want to get in an area where um, the water is, is more clear. You know, if I can find, if anybody know an area in Virginia that has better water outside of the the Chesapeake Bay or, or maybe parts of the Chesapeake Bay that's maybe more clear. Uh, I would definitely like to to go out there and do some crabbing and you know get some very very uh, good better um, footage. You know, of course you can be able to see everything that's in the cage and the cage itself, but. You know, just to get uh, some some footage of uh, maybe some of the marine life that's around it. And this crab is in the middle of this storm here. He's not letting anything affect him. And, uh, and look at look at the way look at their mouth. Look at the way their mouths are. That's very very interesting here. Yeah, so whatever's going on, it seems like it's blowing them away. But he is going to town on this chicken. But yeah, I, I definitely want to do more videos, so 